All right, Zach, if you didn't hear the little robot, recording is currently in pro progress. Um, nice. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start off by asking you, how did the um, project initially come to you for uh, Bowen? Sweet. Yeah. Um, Bowen's Heart, it's funny. I, I tell people it's a little bit of an unconventional way to come about doing a documentary, although most ways of coming to do a documentary are a little unconventional. So, so basically what had happened was me and my partner kind of cut our teeth in video journalism and started to do a lot of like human interest type of video, video journalism. And uh, through that process of working in that space, um, met a lot of people that had been through, you would call them like traumatic life events. And, um, you know, they would share their story with us. And so we kind of got a knack for that. And um, through that work, you know, how word, word travels. Um, and so it was kind of like friends of friends of friends knew the couple who's um, and the family who's featured in the documentary. And they had been hoping to do something like this for a long time. And when they saw the nature of our work and how we kind of treated the subject matter and kind of leaned into sensitive topics. I think that they were drawn to that and they approached us about what it would look like if we followed their family over the course of um, of this difficult kind of life, life event they had for their son. Um, so that's kind of the, how it came to be. So there were obviously reenacted points in the, in the film, but we're, at what point did it come to the point where you were starting the actual like filming the actual people as their life was going? That's a good question because um, there's a little bit of a blend. Yeah, there's this kind of surrealistic blend that takes place in the piece. And for the most part, that was happening kind of organically as we were with them. So because of the unconventional way of like, doing this documentary we kind of really embedded ourselves with this family about two months before the major surgery that is kind of the climax of the piece um, takes place and along the way like we would go stints of weeks just like filming and kind of kind of like and at the same time of filming trying to figure out exactly like what's the best way to tell this story? You know, you're as, as the person behind the scenes, you're thinking of like, where does this piece fit in? How does, how do we pull on this different thread? Um, and so the portions that would feel, I mean, I, I, I struggle to say any of them were reenacted because a lot of them kind of came about organically or through, um, us kind of having the idea of like, it would be great if we illustrated what Bowen's like lack of cap physical capability would be. You know what I mean? Like it, if, we, if we could try and find a scene that could help us illustrate that, um, something that is true to what would happen normally, but maybe like, you know, isn't going to happen in the weeks that we had already planned on being here. So let's go to this, you know, climbing gym, you know, for example, like, let's go to the climbing gym, which is something we had heard, you know, the family talk about, like, you know, he struggles in X, Y, or Z activity. So let's go there and put them in that situation and then kind of let things play out the way they do. You know what I mean? So like, right. so that was kind of the, that was kind of the way that we approached, we approached the entire film, uh, was kind of like trying to find those different scenes that we could accentuate the story that we knew we were trying to tell. <clears throat> sorry. So was it your guys's idea? <laughs> Look, I'm so sorry. No worries. Was your guys' idea to include music, or was that something that was so important to their journey that um, the music needed to be included? Do you mean the the music that we used to score the film or the the portion of the story where he's like making his own music? So I meant the portion of the story where, it, he, you know, it starts with the dad, I guess, you know, the story line where it starts with the the dad with his music and then the, the 
the son singing and then ultimately singing at the uh, in the ring or at the big event. So. Totally. Yeah, I think that um, I think that that probably was always going to be a part of the story just by the nature of the dad's backstory being that like you know there's a lot of philosophical questions that get asked in in the documentary which is kind of about like family and 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 the roles that we play within family and how that determines you know what we do and maybe sometimes the irrational things that we decide and all that and so because the dad had this backstory of being on the road as a musician and kind of like having this life of like you know uh in and out in and out and that being their norm it, it seemed natural to include his portion about the music in but then i thought i think that both me and my partner we both thought that it ref, it was there's there's a thematic nuance there when you when you put bowen up against his dad matt and you see kind of like the parallels between the two of them and the differences and how much you can tell that bowen looks up to his dad and i feel like the music portion of that really illustrates that because you can see the connection between the two of them and how it's like being passed down from father to son but also that 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 causes you to ask a couple of questions too about the nature of uh of the relationship like is bowen at certain points like is bowen going along with things that that he normally wouldn't go along with because he adores his dad so much or his mom so much you know what i mean so i think the music kind of wove right Willie well that thread wove really well into those questions of asking about like you know how much does this kid look up to his parents and how much is he willing to like trust them and so and so yeah I think that I think that it was always going to to be a, a portion but it ended up serving a really good story theme as well in the, in the documentary okay. <clears throat> okay that's pretty cool then so did you guys you guys were there for the filming during the surgery yeah, I mean, we didn't obviously get to go and film inside the operating room, right. but but we yeah we followed them to the hospital um, where it took place, and and we're filming that entire day, and um, we ended up filming in the waiting room for all the many hours that it was happening. But in the in the editing process, I think we realized it was so much more compelling to go, kind of go really dramatic and then come out and seeing them for the first time, kind of you know, witness what happened. Right. Now, do you guys actually film in Ann Arbor? Or yeah. Or do you guys actually film? That's pretty cool. So are you guys from Ann Arbor too or just the... No, it's... um. So <laughs> we were based in Florida. The Hammets, the family in the documentary, lives in Nashville. But hmm. they originally used... They, they lived in northern ohio on the border of ohio and michigan when bowen was born and when they first found out about his condition and so naturally they went to ann arbor for his medical surgeries and so but between the time that he had had, had his last surgery and and when we started filming they had moved to nashville so there's kind of like yeah it was it, so we ended up following them from nashville to ann arbor but the re that was the reason that they um were basically traveling there is that his whole medical history was there the people that had done the surgeries in the past are there um and so there was they wanted to make sure that they were you know with the best of the best and the people that could you know give them the best medical care possible so so that was the nature of the ann arbor connection no well i, I thought it was interesting because it's like <clears throat> half hour away from me <clears throat> oh yeah are you are you in detroit i'm in toledo ohio oh, okay actually, but okay we're at the very basically you can walk over the line to michigan yeah so, yeah yeah yeah. yeah i was I there think, yesterday <laughs> i think they i think they live i think that um where the hammocks where bowen was born was in perry ohio okay yeah so nice. so yeah. with the actual film was there anything that you did film or that you know maybe wasn't filmed that you had considered um including in the narrative yeah, I know that there is for for sure, but I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. It's been, oh, geez, it's been so long since I cut this film. Um, 
I like I said, I the all the stuff in the waiting room. Um, I thought at the time, I really thought that there would be a lot of tension if there was um if we had this dramatic scene in the movie where you see him get wheeled off and then we're just sitting kind of waiting and but it ended up being that the time it wasn't as economical to just linger there as much so i think that that got left on the cutting room floor um and i, I feel like there were a variety of instances too um Oh, I do remember one thing. There, there, I was trying, you, you might remember a couple shots where it's a really dramatic, almost more commercial style lighting where Bowen has his shirt off and there's the scar and he's got the projection behind him and you've got that, like those light streak effects going on. That, that idea was initially, wasn't supposed to be that initially. Initially the idea was much more, much more boring mm -hmm. Because my my thought was, what if we tried to show these archival videos that they had, like all these home videos that they had? What if we tried to show them in a creative way? What if we tried to project them onto the like different different um, walls and rooms in their house and like film the projection itself as kind of like a a way of like illustrating like the the memories that spaces can hold and you know something along those lines, just a more creative way of showing. Art, archival like video in the end it didn't I don't know it, it was more distracting than it was helpful or interesting but that was an idea that I was thinking was what if we tried to do like a projection type thing of these old videos on Bowen's chest over top of like the scar that uh, he had huh. and 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 we did film that but it was just kind of like I don't know it wasn't as compelling and the funny thing was I was like okay I, we got that in the can how about we Bowen, how about this? How I'll take the camera and I'll go over here, and now you stand here for these interesting portraiture shots, and those are the ones that we end up using. So it's funny how those things work. How you end up with the first idea, but then you don't end up using that, and it evolves into something else. But yeah, so that's another thing that just didn't didn't make it in because it was it was a uh, it was an idea that in my head that didn't translate as well. Like when you brought it into the editor, so. What was it like with your research? Like what level of research did you have to go into um, about Bowen's condition in order to uh, make this film happen? So the what's really interesting about this subject matter is that my partner has done, has created films with people who have been, who have basically had congenital heart disease too, as part of their like story and the human interest story. And so it's one of those one of those instances where coming into it, we both had way more knowledge than the average person. <laughs> so it was kind of like it was it was more filling in the gaps of um of Bowen's specific condition. You know, like knowing a lot of the stuff about how like oh well when they're born, you know this ventricle is not connected. All that stuff was kind of like it was easy to wrap your head around. It was easy to understand, like the only having half of a heart type thing. Um, and how it just can't get the blood flow as well throughout the body. Um, that's, there wasn't much of a learning curve there, but more so it was like Bowen's specific history. And because that was the stuff um, that made his, his story so much more interesting because he's kind of an unconventional case in that when he was first born, he was uh, within, I want to say it was like th in, within two years, you're supposed to have three surgeries that are based for his specific condition, instead of having that third one that year two, he was looking fine and they and the the parents delayed it. So that's what made his story interesting because he was like this outlier case where they went in a different direction. And now they were grappling with, did we make the right decision? You know what I mean? Was this really what was best or were we acting out of just like wanting to preserve the like stability that we had? So, so it was more so learning the specifics of his case that were, or that was the, the learning curve. Okay. Um, so with Bowen, did he have a hard time doing any of the shots um, like based on his ability? Like there's the water shots. Um, there's you know some of the running shots. And I know that that can, that can push and stress them. So I was curious if there was anything that you had to, um, you know, really work around or cut multiple shoot shots for. Yeah, there was, I mean, that was the interesting nature of this is that like, 
is that's kind of what you're almost looking for. <laughs> like you're looking for those moments where you don't, you, and I, I wouldn't say that we were pushing that hard. I think there were a couple of days where you could tell, I mean, with any kid that they're just like, Bowen, he, Bowen's a very easy kid to film because he is very agreeable. <laughs> and he, he, he actually is a really good sport when I, when I compare it to other kids that um I've had the, the privilege, let's say, of filming on cam on camera, but but um, yeah, in the case of most physical activities that um, that he, we got him on camera doing, whether it was the swimming, um, whether it was the rock climbing, whether it was just running around with other kids, like you, it it was almost like it, it was it, you you could definitely tell that that he stood out in terms of his stamina from the other kids. Um, and so I'd say every single one of those instances, there was always a moment of like, either he was breathing heavy and trying to act like he wasn't, or like, you know, there's that great scene where he's has to get out of the, out of the pool while all the other kids are still playing. Right. And it's like, and it's, and it's exactly like from a storytelling perspective, it's exactly what you want to see because, because that's actually what, what happens. And so, yeah, it's, right. it's interesting because like uh, you, you're almost like hoping that you push him a little too far <laughs> because like that's naturally what what is happening in this everyday life um and it wasn't it wasn't hard to get honestly because it only took maybe 20 minutes of swimming in the pool before he was just naturally like i gotta i gotta tap out yeah <clears throat> excuse me so then um the cameraman did you hold the camera i know that i was uh primarily when it comes to me and my partner she's the she's like the directing side of things and i'm more of the cinematography side of things because um I, I so i was you operating spoke in the, the movie a couple of times right yeah there okay. were a couple instances where i fielded some questions to him in the moment yeah that's what i thought okay yeah i i remember you were asking bowen a few things so before the movie before you guys started doing the movie did you guys sit down and extensively speak with the siblings and the, you know obviously you talked to the parents but did you sit down and talk with all the siblings before you started doing this yeah the um the, i want to say there were maybe two two days of just like when we first got there of just basically hanging out of just kind of like getting acclimated to each other and kind of being like all right well we are going to be a fixture in you guys life for the next like six months so <laughs> so like let's get to know each other and everything um but uh yeah we 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 did we we talked with the other siblings and developed like relationships with them and obviously like you could tell that we interviewed them too at a certain point because we get we had them on camera um but, but yeah we we did a lot of we tried to be very intentional about the amount of relational work that we put up front um so as to when the time came that it, we were pushing you know what i mean like in the way that every documentarian has to kind of push you know it was coming it was it was less from like an alien stranger kind of per, you know lens and more from like someone that you had developed a relationship with <laughs> right right um i think that's that's a was a good idea because uh, I think that the siblings are all pretty they handled it all pretty well in the film yeah um, and I and I know that the parents they 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 did a lot of work on the front end even before we showed up of like explaining kind of the the how and the why and the like what they wanted to do and achieve and so I think that they had put a lot of like relational time into like priming them for this type of thing um so did you guys, I know you said you had projects prior to this, you and your partner. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you've worked on or the type of sure. things that you've done? Yeah, so primarily um, the projects that I'm referring to came out of working for um, the Today Show, actually, <laughs> oddly enough. So we, uh, I've always been kind of like one of those guys who's always had a camera in his hand <laughs> since I was a young age and so I knew I knew fairly early on I'd say in high school that I wanted to do something in that realm and in, in the in the film and video kind of realm um, and then I met my partner when I was studying uh, in undergrad and then soon soon after I, I graduated um, they had basically 
in a in a writing capacity had worked for with people at NBC kind of in like the personal essay type of blogosphere that realm and um when we had gotten together and started collaborating on projects uh they her her contact over at NBC basically said hey we would love to do a video with you and they were thinking you know your classic like kind of more selfie style videos you know what I mean that kind of go up in that capacity right but because we had developed this new kind of collaboration where like I brought the video perspective, she kind of brought the directing writing perspective. She was like, let's take this topic that you want me to, to write about and make a video about and let's turn it into like a more kind of well, well done video per se, like where we get real people and we try and flesh out this issue. issue. And that basically started a career, a, a career, like a, a two year long process of us going on contract with the Today Show um uh and basically making human interest mini documentaries for them and over the course of those two years we did like i want to say it was like over over 70 like three minute three to five minute videos it was insane it was like it, it was it was like the most amount of hustle that you could ever do but it was so interesting because we got to go visit like a bunch of different people and and a lot of a lot of people like that had lived through um kind of like either man-made or natural disasters. So think like hurricanes that had taken their homes. And, you know, and so we told like these survivor stories as well as like whatever was in the news, like whatever in, issue was in the news at that time, we tried to find like someone that exemplified that issue and could speak to that issue. And so it was really cool. We got to travel all over the U.S. and tell those people's stories and uh, meet a lot of people. And that was kind of organically what kind of got our name out there into the sphere enough that that people you know it led to this project but yeah that's awesome well then your past and present have been talked about do you have any other projects coming out in the future or anything you've been working on in the future there was that we were trying to do another another documentary um at the beginning of COVID, but that kind of threw everything for a loop. And I don't know, who knows, we might pick up the pieces on it someday, but but it kind of like, it, it all got, COVID you know, ruined COVID, everything. it just ruined everything. Um, I'm currently working uh, actually at the, the university in town doing essentially documentary work as well. Um, and we're trying to do this long form piece about um, artificial intelligence within the institution. And that that's something that's going to be interesting, but it's within the context of, of my job, but I'm trying to make it more in the line of like, kind of like what you saw in Bowen's Heart, more that style of documentary. But but um, yeah, nothing other than that. I mean, just just some freelance projects here and there. But uh, but I, I would really love to find another story like Bowen's Heart because I love those stories where you can just kind of really embed yourself and start asking questions to real people and and think through kind of what the more philosophical and moral uh, underpinnings behind people's actions, especially when the con within the context of families. I think that that stuff is so fascinating. Well, in the future, would you revisit, like if there was another big event in Bowen's life, is that something that you would revisit for not a sequel, you know, yeah. for, you know, I hope nothing happens, but you know, for instance, if he needs another surgery, like in five years or something, is that something that you're interested in doing? Or do you prefer to explore other options? I, I'd i say, I'd say that it would have to be within the context of some, of some different story thread that would be interesting enough. And, and what I mean by that is that like, in the case of, of, of Bowen's story this time around, the arc was very much built in because you had this one surgery, right? And so you kind of knew like, all right, we're building to this one thing. And within the context of this kind of flashpoint, almost like a, a, a hyper-realistic flashpoint in these people's lives, a lot of questions bubble to the surface. And so, and so because of that, it, it, it was like this very fertile ground to ask a lot of questions that within the context of regular society, like regular life, like you don't normally think about these things. You don't think about like what it is that, that these, these motivations that push us to do sometimes rational or irrational things. And so I think that if, if there was another type of fertile ground like that, that I felt like there was 
that kind of opening that it wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility because those are the type of things that I'm always looking for. Like what are, what are the, the instances in which kind of the fabric of our polite society kind of tears apart enough that you can kind of get in there and examine the things that, that really make us tick. So if, it, if, if that's what I felt like was, was capable, then sure. Okay. Well, that pretty much um, wraps up all the questions I have. Is there anything you wanted to plug? Um, I wanted to give you a short platform if you want to plug anything or share any social media or websites. No, I would just say, um, I know that the film is coming out digitally here in like a week or so. Um, I think it's, so is it July 14th. Yep. And so, yeah, if you're, if you're interested, if you, if you enjoy really character study type pieces, especially within the documentary space to go check out Bowen's heart, um, it's a it's a story that I think at, on the surface, if you read about it, you think this is a very niche topic, but by the end of it, you realize that anyone can get something out of it. So, right. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's the thing about that, just to add on about Bowen's art uh, for people who are going to watch it, it the, takes place in July. The main story takes place in July and it's releasing in July. So it's a perfect time to check it out <laughs> there you go yeah you can know that the same type of weather if you're in the, the nashville area and then the ann arbor area you're, you're watching at that same point in time yeah you're exactly go. yeah you're good to go all right well, perfect well it was a wonderful time uh talking with you zach um i really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me and i hope you stay safe and have a wonderful week thanks appreciate it